because I don't draw a lot of orchids, you know? And if you don't know, there's nothing wrong with looking something up and consulting the Book of Knowledge, AKA Google, being like, yo, what does an orchid look like? Super easy. All right, coffee top off. Thanks for being here, guys. This is fun as always. Just to hang out and draw and take all your suggestions. Thank you so much. I like milk in my coffee and that's what I was looking for. There we go. And apparently my kids upstairs are using their room as a trampoline. All right, so I'll just do, let's see. Just looking at a couple pictures here. Should we turn our page? Maybe we'll turn the page. And we're gonna free ball it, freestyle it, <laughs> and just come up with a sketch here of an orchid. So it looks like, what kind is this? I don't know what kind this is. A moth orchid, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference that. So looks like it has a leaf, or not a leaf, but a petal, something like that. And no, I'm not, when I say reference, it means I'm looking at it for the overall shape, but not necessarily like, oh, I'm sketching it in the exact view that we're seeing. Okay, so I'm, I, I tend to try and rotate things if possible, for example. Do them from a couple different views because that's going to help you like understand it. So now that I've done the initial sketch, and this is what we're going to do with the animals, is now I can go, oh, okay, this is kind of the shape. And we can kind of freestyle a little bit. And as your comfort level increases with these, you can almost just jump off and start doing your own thing. Or maybe even playing God or bot 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 botanist, <laughs> botanist, and just making up your own flowers. So that's how I kind of do it. Just try a couple different views, shapes, and so forth. All right, but yeah, it looks like they kind of have, you know, there's variations on orchids, it looks like. Just different shapes, different things happening. Let's just try a different variety here. So I'll do a couple on the same page. Again, using this brush pen, the Furigakuchi pen from Kuritake. But yeah, looking at the structure of an or orchid, it looks like you have kind of two main lobes, right? So this is, this one I'm just making up in my head now. And then you have kind of this almost star configuration, three-pronged, and another something in the middle, and, you know, we can kind of make up our own shape here. So this is how you go from, okay, observe, pivot, vary, and then imagine. So if there were some, you know, step to all this, it's like, let me draw the one thing first. Now let me rotate, see if I missed anything in another view. And then, see if I can imagine based on the patterns that I observe. And the same thing's gonna happen with color, where once we add color, You know, I might want to add peaks to these petals, for example. But once we add color, then 
I could even vary the colors um, and come up with my own kind of thing. <laughs> or just make it up as you go. Also fine. Maybe these are alien flowers <laughs> based on the orchids. Okay, now some of these have really, really, really delicate colors, so it's probably gonna be hard for you to see on screen. I'll try my best. Um, I will say, like I always do, that these will be available for download on the Google Drive that's listed. In fact, these are going to be so delicate that I think I need to use my Copic markers because I have just a much wider range of colors available. All right, so observe, pivot, vary, and imagine. All right, so I've got some purples here, like some really, really, really light ones. And with Copics, you can kind of tell because the number system is so easy to understand. This is a blue violet zero zero zero, which is which basically means very very light. Um, if you have three numbers, it's typically a very light color. If you have two numbers, like a V zero one, and let's see, a V zero six, and you can see it in the cap, the six is going to be darker than the one, but they're in the same color family. Whereas the zero 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 is in a different color family. Well, not color family, but not in the same lane as far as Hugo's. So that's that's why my go-to for professional work is the Copic marker because it's reliably consistent in the colors and super easy to understand. Even if I haven't used that color before, it's just super easy. All right, I'm going to start with the first one we did here. And I made some observations like just how these colors are blending out. Looks like my brush pen is bleeding just a little bit. So if you are using one of these, just be a little bit careful. All right, I'm just gonna do the outline like so. And for color reference, take another peek here. All right. So being careful not to shade all the way to the edge for a reason on this one. And that is, I want to be able to get some intense purples in these areas that I'm currently shading in. But I also want to be able to blend out to like a lighter color. Okay, I'll just go ahead and shade this in on the inside. So we're going to be adding some reds and so forth. So now I can jump to this V01. And you can see it's a little bit more pink, but if we want that nice color blend, it just works beautifully on this marker paper and with the Copic ink. If you're careful, just like that. I'm just gonna keep building up until we get, you know, those really intense areas of color. Something like that. And then just using this blue violet to basically scrub the paper and the inks should blend, should blend out. Squint T05 or violet five. It's called marigold if you're using Copic markers. Like I said, they are expensive, but I do like the color consistency that you get. Okay, that was a V5, so let's use a V6. Kind of help with that step. Just 
just like that. And then I'll use a white pen to kind of help out in a few areas as well. We also have like some oranges and reds kind of happening. So I'm gonna use this red violet just to introduce some other colors here. All right, and I'm gonna go, sorry, I had to zoom in on my reference here. But like I said, this is, for me anyways, about observing first, and then when I have kind of the experience with it and understand, oh, here's kind of how the colors flow or work, then it's a lot easier to just do this stuff from your head. Just be like, oh yeah, I kind of know what an orchid looks like. I can do that. But it's really hard to do if you've never done it and if you just don't know, like, so don't beat yourself up if you're using reference, but there's a there's a good way to use reference, which like I said, observe, pivot or rotate what you're drawing. Pivot and rotate. Vary it, come up with some other thing and then just start imagining. All right, this one's gonna need a little bit of work because I kind of messed up on the inside. We'll fix some of it with this black and then we'll bring out a little bit of texture with some white as well it's always nerve-wracking doing like um, drawings like this because you're probably looking at like, what is he doing? <laughs> and then if you hang for the whole thing, you're like, oh, okay, now I see. So always a little nerve wracking for me, but this is a new gel white pen that I found that I've been really liking. I mean, it's kind of super juicy, so that's a plus. If you are doing white ink though, you want to make sure it's like, if not the last, close to last thing you do, or understand that, you know, the inks are opaque, so you can't exactly put marker over it. So as long as you know that, it's actually not too bad. Once again, this is Sketch Day Live. I am Spencer and I'm an industrial designer. We're trying to illustrate some flowers right now. Did some trees and rocks earlier. Using just a, a white pen here. To add some details to our orchid. Like so. All right. It's starting to feel pretty good. White makes a huge difference. Huge. Bigly. <laughs> Such an odd word. Anyhow. And then we'll just do a quick stem here. Something like that. And so now that I've done that one and I kind of have a sense for the color blends, I can go, okay. Let's do this orchid and, you know, maybe I'll do something different, something that's a bit more red, go a little faster. And I know what I'm kind of getting into with the ink and the marker as well. So it should pick up. You should be able to move a little faster the more you learn as you're drawing. OK, 
Okay. If you're not learning, you're not doing it the right way. Meaning just being open to making those mistakes. And if you're lucky, taking feedback from people, always a good, good thing. I love feedback myself. And I always say I'm not, I'm not a perfect artist or designer or illustrator, but you'd be hard pressed to find someone more passionate about learning and improving than me. All right, so this one we're gonna go with like maybe more of a red orange. Red orange look here. Let's see. And in case you missed it, this Ohuhu marker uh, review that I did, check that out um, and you'll get a little bit more of what I'm doing here, or a little bit more information rather on the markers themselves. They're pretty awesome. I've thoroughly enjoyed using them. So if you wanna check them out, check out that review. Yeah, and once you know where color goes, it should be a little easier to just be looser with um, your shading as well. Oops, that was off screen, my apologies. I do want an in-between for these two. I'm trying to find one in this Ohuhu set, so bear with me. The colors are all different in this set too, so that is another Ah, there we go, that works. It's another thing I have to kind of watch out for as I'm working with these. So maybe a different way to achieve this blend, kind of go color and then go into the texture on the petal itself. Some of these lines and I want to get like a deeper red or even like a purplish in there so we can play with that it's super fun by the way thank you for the suggestion and topic of doing orchids or rather things from nature super fun so yeah this this works pretty well as a nice deep red Maybe just adding some texture to the petal. Yeah, it's been a while since we did some nature stuff here. I think we did a bird. It's probably over a month now ago. Certainly a few weeks ago. That was super fun. So again, just learning from observation, you can kind of start to just make up your own stuff. So keep your eyes open, try and figure out things that work for you as you try to illustrate those things. Because drawing is not about exactness so much as it is, is a, eh, so much as it is <laughs> about symbolically representing reality in efficient ways, or at least sketching for me is just that. So if you can get it looking close enough, usually that's good enough. All right, so we got this one. 
I'm gonna add a few white marks to it. Maybe just do some light color washes on the others and we'll call those good. We'll just jump into animals for the last segment here. Sorry, I haven't been watching the chat. Let me check in with you little monsters. Hello, hello. You're welcome, Nathaniel. Thanks for watching. I will keep drawing. This is probably the most consistent I've been in my life um, as far as drawing goes. So, and it's been awesome and I'm having fun. Appreciate all the support. Um, I really do. Like, this is my dream or one of my many dreams. Like I want to start a restaurant one day. That's a crazy dream. Sorry, I just had a sneeze there. <laughs> Had to mute. Okay. Happy little orchids. That's right. This is Black Ross with Sketch a Day. So the stippling really just helps with the texture. And there you go. It's you know a bit a bit more up close. Um, I think with some work, I could see myself doing these and just really having a nice therapeutic experience just drawing orchids. So this is the one I imagined. So I'm just gonna do something crazy here and we'll do like a green into orange blend or something. We'll just have some fun. So green, maybe a little bit of yellow. And I definitely want some nice intense orange. This I want to be kind of white. So, you know, I'm taking, taking this trick I learned on the other drawings. I can pull that in. So just some nice thin yellow lines. And you can see how much faster it's getting now after doing this one carefully. So this is like you're literally observing and just studying. Now you pivot, execute, and at this phase, I can now just really start to be more expressive. Because I kind of have an idea. Sorry, I've got a little, little slack action going there. You recognize that sound. Um, but here, you know, the green and the yellow form a nice base, and it can have this more intense orange and we can kind of fade that out with just even a little stippling and texture work <laughs> right there and then go really intense i'm going to leave these spots a little light or white as well just like that again really intense here Thinking of the geometry of this petal even, something I wasn't thinking too much about in these, just kind of observing the color, but you know, leaving this spot a little lighter and not shaded in, it's going to help communicate the three-dimensionality of that region. And yeah, just, just play with it, have fun, experiment. The best thing about having a sketchbook to me, not the best thing, but one of the best things is you can just freestyle and be expressive and try new things and no one cares. Um, I used to get really stressed out about drawing in front of people, believe it or not. <laughs> but I can't tell you, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So your sketchbook's just a great like safe space for you if you want to be expressive and try something new or different. You can always just do it in your sketchbook. All right, do you want to go a little deeper red just on the inside here?
Alright, something like that. Oh, I just realized I didn't really do the like pollen, or I don't even know what you call it. I'm terrible with names. I mean, I've studied it in school, but just terrible with names. Let's see, we've been going an hour 14, making good time. This is Sketch Day Live. We'll probably go for another 30 minutes here. Happy Friday to all of you. I would ask what you're up to this weekend, but I suspect most of you are staying inside. At least I hope you are. While we're doing crazy stuff here, let's go. Hmm. Yeah, we could do purple. Something like this. If you can, if you like using markers, Maybe I should put together a guide on how to get into markers, like super cheap. But if you do like markers, I would recommend the Ohuhu markers or the Bianyo brand. Both of them I reviewed on the site or on the YouTube rather. If you go to sketchaday.com slash stuff, that's another way to kind of get other information about just the materials I use and why and all of that. But get marker paper. Marker paper is awesome because it won't uh, suck your markers dry when you use them. Um, if you use regular printer paper, oftentimes it's so porous on like a sponge that it'll just like eat through your markers. So like, that's why I was cringing a little bit when I did the rocks first. Because I forgot I wasn't using marker paper. But fortunately I have uh, refill inks. So it's not a huge problem. On this one, I'm just going from my head now, right? So it's kind of what we're doing here. of these stems in. It's just kind of thinking of a page overall. You know, they're obviously not one plant, but just have some nice long leaves. Maybe on the bottom here. Strathmore Tone Tan for marker. I'm not really a tone paper guy, but I've done tone paper renderings or drawings. It feels a little gimmicky to me. So maybe that's why I've just kind of avoided it, but they do look cool. I mean, I just feel like the, the tone paper helps mask a lot of uh, things that can be wrong with the drawing, at least that I've seen. So I haven't personally leaned into it. If you can draw really well on a white piece of paper, like start from nothing and get something good out of it, you're like, that's when you know. That's not to say it's wrong, just a matter of preference. I 
All right, so I believe there was a request for an alpaca earlier. So we'll start there. Just get a couple lines in on this guy. I'm not gonna do all the stippling. Let's move a little faster now. So this was really slow, faster, fast, and now we're just now we're just going. And like draw something that looks like an orchid fairly quickly, or you should be able to if you've been following along and kind of using this this approach. <clears throat> Observe, pivot, vary, and then imagine. It might not be perfect, but sometimes good enough is okay. gonna do this these leaves real quick I don't know why I started with that dark dark green but <laughs> that's all right There, you should be able to see the whole thing now. Okay. And now I'll take this green that I started with and just try and blend out here. One of the nice things about being sketching things from nature is I feel like it can be a little bit more expressive with your stroke and not as structured or rigid when it comes to approaching the drawing. So I do appreciate that. It's fun. Quick test here. That blue is a little too intense. So let's see if we can find one that works for the background. Mm, let's see. Don't want to do, well, I could do turquoise. What's up, Chris? Welcome, welcome. Um, the Ahuhu markers do not fit, but the Bianos fit. They fit in the spray marker. I've been meaning to hit you up, Chris. I need, uh, I need a CNC lathe. And I think you might have one. Just personal project, so I'll hit you up. Just a little blue to kind of pull it all together here. Yeah, with these markers, I figure, okay, I can't refill them, but man, I can always buy a new set because they're super cheap. All right, sweet Chris, um, I'll hit you up. Either way, be good to 
reconnect and catch up a little bit. 